who gets the title of the Welsh has become a very common talking point on the internet recently. As in every case where we have a couple characters overperforming, we tend to have an equal amount of characters underperforming in the game. On this channel, we are no strangers to discussing brawlers who are often seen as meta underperformers, but in this video, we have a real case where we'll be discussing a brawler who is actually pretty decent in the game, who even last month was picked in 5 sets of the monthly finals in which he won too. This might seem mediocre, but keep in mind there were several brawlers who were not even picked one time, let alone 5. So if this brawler is actually pretty decent, why are they getting a rework video? Well that is simple. As of recording this video, this character is actually the third least played brawler in the game, and unlike the least and second least played brawlers of Janet and Ash, this brawler does not have a strong online fan base to make up for these lackluster play weights. This brawler, Otis, might even be considered the worst brawler to play in the game. But as an Otis player myself, I'll be diving into exactly why he is seen as boring and how I will work him to fix this. But before we get too deep into that, if you are only interested in the rework concept and not my philosophy behind it, you can jump to this time code on screen where that section starts. But to start off, let's look at what exactly Otis's role is. Starting off, we see that Otis has decent health, respectable damage, and a super that shuts down any form of aggressive play. Based on this, I would say Otis is best described as a counter-aggressive brawler who is there to shut down tanks and assassins. Specifically, he is a single target counter due to his slow unload and reload speed, relatively small area control, and non-piercing super and basic attack. Looking at other brawlers who fit into this role, I was able to find three predominant ones in Cordelius, Charlie, and Colette who are all actually near the middle ranges of popularity unlike Otis. And it is actually here where I found Otis's first problem, his lineal usability. Taking away the fact that all three of these brawlers are objectively better meta-wise, they all also feel more than just the aggression counter role. Cord can become the aggressive brawler due to his assassin capabilities. Colette is a monster against the high safe or any high HP brawler. And Charlie is the queen of versatility with one of the best gadgets and supers in the game. Compared to all that, Otis is just the average tank counter, and while he doesn't get counter picked as hard as the others, his highs are way lower as well. On to his second issue, it is his slow gameplay. In general, more aggressive brawlers like Fang, Mortis, and Dynamite will always be more popular than more passive ones like Meg, Squeak, and Sprout. But with Otis, it's not just the fact that he plays passive, but also the fact that he gets actively punished for playing aggressively. The main cause of this, in my opinion, is his super. Unlike the other three brawlers who I mentioned before, who get about the same amount of value from their supers at long range as they do at close range, Otis pretty much always wants to use his super defensively at closer ranges. The issue I really want to strive to fix in this rework is making players feel incentivized to try and land his super at longer ranges too, and do more than just hold on to it all game. And finally, his third problem is something I semi alluded to in his first issue. This is his lineal build. An underrated characteristic that makes brawlers more popular is their build versatility. This allows players to customize the brawler to their own playstyle and truly make them feel like they are playing their own character. So overall, three main focuses of this rework would be to make Otis feel more versatile, similar to other single target aggressive brawlers. Make his gameplay more dynamic without straying too far from his original design. And finally, to make his builds more varied so players can build him to their own tastes. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into the rework section. To start off the rework, I'll be doing a rather obvious change that I have seen suggested a lot in the community. This is making his ink refills gadget baseline. And just a little heads up for the rest of the concepts, this is not the only change that I'll be making to his kit as actually every part of his kit will be getting slight reworks, changes to the balance, or even just getting replaced entirely. As this might be the most complete rework I have done so far for any brawler. But going back to his basic attack, I will actually also be nerfing the damage to compensate the ink refill implementation. Otis is already pretty underrated, so making this baseline while also giving him a new star power later on in this concept might make him a bit too overpowered. This nerf will land him back at the 840 damage he released with before it got buffed, then nerfed, then buffed again. This also makes the trade-off between him and another controller brawler a little more balanced to me. As before, 
Otis and Lou had almost the same basic attack, with Lou doing less damage but having a freeze effect. But since Otis pretty much always ran his star power that gave him an extra shot, the extra damage was way more impactful than Otis's freeze mechanic, which he also got from his super. But now, Otis would deal slightly less damage, but with more projectiles in exchange for not having the bonus effect. Moving on to Otis's super, I'll be doing a slight reworking of his mechanics. Now the duration of the mute will scale with distance. Going from a minimum of 3 seconds at close range, all the way up to 5 seconds at long range. How this will work is from tiles 1 to 3, it would do the regular 3 second mute. From tiles 4 to 6, it would be boosted to a 4 second mute. And finally, from tiles 7 to 9, you would get the max 5 second mute. This change is meant to make Otis's super just as rewarding to hit at longer ranges as it is to hit at close ranges. As again, the biggest problem with using your super at longer ranges is that the opponent can still escape due to their ability staying the same, minus not being able to attack. But with this change, not only will they be forced to be out of the battle longer, they will also subsequently take more damage and recharge Otis's super more. The best comparison I have for it at longer ranges is Charlie's super. As with Charlie, you can pretty much take the opponent out of the battle for 5 seconds, while also semi getting a guaranteed kill. On the other hand, at max range, Otis' super would force the opponent to retreat for 5 seconds, while also delivering damage equal to a piper shot. I still think it will be weaker than Charlie's super mechanically, but again, that is one of the best supers in the entire game. But now that we are done with Otis' base mechanics, let's move on to his gadgets. And to not sugarcoat it, I will be completely removing Dormant Star while also reworking how Fat Splatter works. The reason behind this is because both of his gadgets do the exact same thing. One uses his basic attack to block off an area for an opponent with damage. The other uses his super to block off an area for an opponent with damage and a mute. In general, Fat Splatter goes against everything else Otis has in his build as everything else is built around maximizing single target matchups. While Dormant Star is just a worse version of Fat Splatter that also requires you to waste your super. In my opinion, for Otis to be more appealing to play, both of these gadgets need to go in some way. So to start off with the reworking of Fat Splatter, it will now be Squeak Arts. Despite breakdancing being one of Otis's key traits, we never see it in his kit, so I decided to add it in with this gadget. Otis consumes one ammo to perform a backwards roll that also leaves behind an ink puddle that lasts 3.3 seconds. This ink puddle is the exact same as flat splatter, but lasts 0.5 seconds less. Also, since it can't be aimed, it deals an increased amount of damage, going from 1150 to 1680, the exact same as two Otis shots. This gadget is meant to be Otis's more defensive one, as not only does it allow him to have more dynamic movement in 1v1 occasions, opponents who try to dash in while Otis doesn't have his super is instead met with a puddle of damage. A fun fact about this gadget, is that it will make Otis become the first controller baller to have a movement ability and finally complete the movement ability chart, as every other archetype has had at least one baller have a movement ability before this. Going on to his brand new gadget, the more offensive one will be Solidify. Otis's main attack dries quickly in the air, allowing it to pierce through all enemies, but not walls. Previously, Otis had a 33% theme with both of his star powers, so I'll be semi-continuing this theme as both of his gadgets will have their effects last for 3.3 seconds. While the other gadget was more meant to boost his matchup against assassins, this one will help a lot with Otis fighting against spawner brawlers, or brawlers who like to group up. Another cool thing that I would like to mention about the previous Otis builds is that with both his gadgets and star powers, one affected his main attack while the other affected his super. And since now both of his gadgets affect his main attack, both of his star powers will affect his super. Going on to his star powers, I already mentioned how Ink Refills has been made base kit, but Stencil Glue, just like Dormant Star, will be completely scrapped. I don't think I have to explain this one as much, as Stencil Glue might be the worst star power in the game. But going back to Dormant Star, anyone who might miss this animation of the star sleeping won't have to worry with Otis' new star power, Recise Seal. With this star power, if Otis misses his super, it will instead lay Dorman on the ground and refund him 50% of his supercharge if he walks over it. With this star power, I want to stress two things, making Otis's super more forgiving and encouraging more aggressive play. This might just be me, but anytime I have an Otis in my game, 
they tend to miss their super a lot. And although I don't find his super too hard to hit myself, if we want Otis to be more popular, we need to have somewhere in his kit for him to be more beginner friendly. And on the other hand, I feel this will have some crazy potential in higher level play, as you will now be able to pair this with team pushes to get a lot of value out of just one super. For example, you could shoot the super at max range one way while the opponents are retreating and shoot the other way to guarantee that either your super or main attack hit. And if your super hits, you're the equivalent of a piper shot wolf for damage now. But if it misses and your main attack hits, well now you can continue the push you are already doing with the supercharge gained from hitting your opponent and grab the dormant star to pretty much have another super ready to go. Overall, I feel it would be a pretty good star power while also not being completely broken as most of the time Otis will still be used as the counter to assassins and tanks and if you are always using your super up close, you shouldn't be missing it. So this star power would be useless in those cases. On to his other star power now. Since his first one made missing your super less punishing, I want this one to make hitting your super more rewarding. This star power is Super Seal. Every seal attack now also loses an AOE of 1 second slow. This AOE would be 3 tiles wide, the same as a Buster passive. This star power will basically be a big risk for a big reward. Similar to his other one, hitting it at close range will only add a little value, as most of the time you would take down any baller you muted anyways, so you don't really need to add a slow. But at longer ranges, you could potentially get a 5 second slow on a baller with your super. And if they want into your team, you could potentially get a team wide slow, very reminiscent to how close old gadget used to be. But also since each slow is only 1 second, it does give the other team potential to get out of the mute's radius. I feel the star power would definitely be the thing that puts Otis' super on par with other controllers like Lou and Amber. But again, since it is a skill shot, it would be way less toxic in the hands of an unskilled player. But now, let's move on to Otis's Mythic Gear and Hypercharge concepts. For Otis's Mythic Gear, we have the Siphon Gear. Otis heals 8% of his HP for every second an opponent is muted. There are three main perks with this Mythic Gear in my opinion. First, just like the rest of his kit, it improves his 1v1 matchups, giving him a bit more survivability. Second, it allows for more synergies with brawlers like Wuffs who can boost your health and healers as Otis can function as a semi-mini tank. And finally, it just adds more versatility to his playstyle, as now he can choose to not attack a muted opponent immediately, and rather refill ammo while healing to get back into the fight faster. Overall, I feel it's a solid mythic gear that isn't always necessary, but does add more options to his build. But now finally, we reach Otis's hypercharge. I want it to be a bit more adventurous with it, and introduce a brand new mechanic in the game with it. One that I feel would definitely be impactful, but not broken. This is the blinding effect with the ink twirl hypercharge. Carrying ink from Otis to his opponent, Seal now also blinds the opponent for the duration of the hypercharge. How the blinding effect works is very simple. The blinded opponent obviously cannot attack as they are also muted by Otis' super, but they only see a map very similar to the Shadow Ram, but this map is blank so they cannot tell how close they are to opponents, water, grass, or even walls. And unlike the Shadow Ram, the opponent who sees this can still be attacked by opponents and healed by teammates. This visual debuff is meant to make it harder for players hit by Otis' super to know where they are going and instead, like anyone who is blinded, run around aimlessly. I don't foresee this effect being too broken for two reasons though. In organized play, the blinded opponent can get call-outs from their teammates to help them. And in cases where the brawler was unable to run away anyway, this effect is almost useless. In terms of power though, I predict this hypercharge to land within the same area as cords or BBs, and could be useful, but not game-changingly broken. But that is all I have for concepts, so instead of the usual best build section, instead I'll be going into an overview of the entire rework. So when looking at the entire thing, we see that Otis would get one of his star powers made baseline, while the other gets scrapped. Similarly, one of his gadgets will be reworked, while the other gets scrapped. His super will get a buff to now scale in duration with distance, and finally he'll get his own mythic gear and hypercharge. Overall, I feel after all these changes, Otis would definitely become a way more popular baller, as now he will function as sort of a mirror to Charlie. Going back to the original three ballers that I compelled him to, you would still pick Colette against tanky ballers or in heist, Cordelius when you need the aggression or to counter hypercharge ballers, and finally Charlie and Otis would be based on preference. 
Foley offers a more defensive playstyle with two gadgets based around eating up the opponent's ammo and having a super to take balls out of the game for up to 5 seconds, while Otis offers a playstyle all based around optimizing 1v1 matchups while also having gadgets and star powers to adapt to any occasion. If you are facing long ranged opponents, your super can mute them for even longer and you can have a mythic gear to take more of their shots. If you are facing assassins or tanks, you have a star power to slow them down and a gadget to roll away from them. When facing ballers who group together or have spawners, well now you have a piercing gadget. With all these changes, Otis goes from a lineal, slow paced counter baller to being the reliable, versatile, and dynamic baller that I feel he always deserved to be. As he would deviate from the normal controller baller who just tries to keep people out of a certain area and instead plays into the role of controlling the pace of the game by making one baller unable to carry or support their team. But that's about all I have for this video. I don't know if you guys could tell, but the audio and editing quality for this video was able to greatly improve in huge part thanks to you guys. I was able to get an even better mic and get both graphic design software and editing software to use. As I mess around more with the mic settings and get more used to the editing software, I hope to further improve my content in the future. But let me know any suggestions you guys might have in the comments down below. As always, also let me know what you guys thought of the Rewoke and if you guys are interested in becoming part of a concept creating community, you can join the Discord server linked in the description. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.